A lot of times I'm driving, there's nothing to do. And I shuffle through the radio before I unglue. There's a lot of red on ways, it's traffic, I'm screwed. And I'm wired a bit different than a regular dude. It's not a bad thing, I embrace it, it's true. The radio don't stimulate brain chemistry fluid. The Buddha found nirvana and the four noble truths. Through a meditative process, right action he proved. For me, I require the use of a tool, a detector, pin, pointer, shovel, and beach scoop. I'm meant to work the dirt with my history crew, but everywhere I look, my interest taboo. Most people choose Bieber over Tippy Canoe. What does a detectorist listen to when the radio is full of bad music and news? I need an alternative for me to peruse. Beyond sight and sound gets fantastic reviews. A metal detecting show where my thought bubble brews. Thank you, Josh Kimmel, for inviting me to a detecting dork out with guests like yours, true. Lee? Are you looking for a high-quality beach and sand scoop? Are you trying to take your hunting to the extreme? How about an American-based company that stands behind their product and everything they sell? Then check out our friends over at Extreme Scoops. John has been making scoops for some time now and makes a quality beach and sand scoop to take your hunting to the next level. Extreme Scoops recently released their new sand shredder that works great in the water and on the beach. And if you're a new Equinox user, you may want to check out his Surfmaster X3 that can trap those small targets you new Equinox users are finding out there. Extreme Scoops company approach is let's do it right. So do it right, buy it once, and go to the extreme. Extremescoops.com that's X-T-R-E-M-E scoops dot com. Hey, boys and girls. We are going to talk about S&W Shooters and Prospectors. What is S&W Shooters and Prospectors? We at S&W Shooters and Prospectors help people find treasure. Did you say treasure? Yes, treasure. Just listen to this amazing reveal from our happy customer, Jackie Sparrow. Arr. Chocolate ship shape and a pleasure to deal with. I was able to buy everything that I needed at prices that were shillings less than others. I found my nine pieces of meat in no time. Savvy? I know you're asking yourself, why should I shop at SW Shooter and Prospectors? Chuck Smalley has over 45 years of metal detecting experience. He works with each customer one-on-one -on -one to customize their setup to match their skill level. So if you have always dreamt of being a pirate, Arr. contact Chuck at SNW Shooters and Prospectors and he'll take a great deal for you. I pass rum not included. Caution. Please do not operate motor vehicles or power equipment while under the influence of this show. Listening to this show could cause side effects such as bouts of laughter, violent binges of cabin fever, and even dreams of silver and gold. Please be advised. Now that the fine print is out of the way, on with the show. All right, the fine print's out of the way. It's time to roll with the show. We're back. We're live once again. You are listening to Beyond Sight and Sound, Metal Detecting and Treasure Running Radio for all the really cool digging people out there. And Well, some of us are just a little colder than others still. It's it's chilly up here, definitely. I've had to go to, to two detectees' hoodies. I've got one covering the in-studio cam and the other one covering me. Either way, looking in the chat, we've got the Bills, we've got Dawn, we've got uh, Abby, Abby, hmm. we've got Chuck, Steve, Phil, uh, <clears throat> all sorts of people dropping in, detecting addicts, 
Got them coming in from all over the country. Nice to see, definitely. Nice to see Dawn from Can You Dig It? Uh, you can catch them on Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern, over on Detect America Facebook group, as well as catching Frank, Steve, and Ronnie Mondays, 8 p.m. Eastern, over on the Detect America group. You can find the link for them in the links and description and chat under the Electrolysis Boot Camp videos. Also, the other links in the chat stand the usual suspects, and we have the link for the History Digger on YouTube. If you have not subscribed to him, make sure and go over, check out the channel, uh, catch a few videos, go ahead and, and throw some likes, share the love, and uh, you just never know what you could find looking through those recently uploaded videos. You you just may... You never know what sort of a gold mine is there. And you'll be very entertained by the videos, I'm sure. So we've got that link there as well. Those that saw the uh, description today, the post for the show, obviously many of you know our guest tonight. Many of you may not. But hey, that's why we tune in. Uh, so, obviously, we're here Monday, Mondays, Wednesdays and Sundays at 8 p.m. <coughs> Eastern on Spreaker, the various podcast distribution services, YouTube, yada, yada, you know the drill. So, let's get our guest in here tonight and see how he's doing. Our guest tonight is none other than Rob Rizzo, the history digger on YouTube, and he says that they're in quite a heat wave in Wisconsin. How's it going, Rob? Josh, you are the man. Thank you so much for, first of all, inviting me to be on the show. Um, I'm glad you are warm. You know, we are having a heat wave here in Wisconsin. I live in South Central Wisconsin, and uh, oh gosh, it was in the you know the the low digits, but it hit the twenties today. I was actually able to get out and go for a walk, but uh, this is the time of the year where, as you know, right, it can be quite cold here in the Midwest. I saw a meme, oh gosh, about a week ago, and it kind of summarizes how some of us feel here, but it says, you know, the air hurts my face. Why do I live where the air hurts my face? <laughs> That's a good question. I'm still trying to figure that out, but I, I do want to say thank you and hello to everybody. A special shout out to Dawn. Can You Dig It, one of my favorite people. If you guys have not checked out her channel, please do so. But uh, a belated Happy New Year to all of you, and um, really looking forward to the conversation tonight, Josh. Nice. Likewise. And I know there's been a few people that uh, they've been commenting on the posts and sending messages that they're looking forward to hearing from you today. A lot of people really enjoy seeing your videos. Well, I appreciate that. You know, it's um, a, for some people, right, uh, who have a YouTube channel, I mean, it's always interesting, I think, to ask people why. You know, why do you have a channel? <laughs> why, are you, why, are you, you know, why are you doing this? And uh, it, it, it checks several boxes for me. You know, I actually enjoy the editing process. I love creating. Um, I love telling stories and so on. But um, interestingly, it's also really helpful to go back. You know, when you're when you're when you're looking at yourself in high def and you're seeing how you swing and so forth, it it can actually be pretty instructional. Um, right. But there's several reasons, you know, why I I do, and it, it's an interesting thing because you know not everybody's into the YouTube thing. Not everybody has a channel, nor should they. But I I, I appreciate it when others enjoy this um i, I gotta be honest that's how i learned i you know read a lot of books i love andy savish's books and stuff but man there are some great not only entertaining videos out there but instructional I, i'll just tell you one quick thing here um i recall when i moved from the simplex you know the the note to simplex up to my equinox you know for those that have made that jump either you know to the knox from anything um, man, it can be overwhelming. And there's a uh, a couple, I know you know these people, uh, Relic Dirty Hands, who put yeah. together just this 
incredible set of in, I actually thought these were people who worked for mine lab. Okay. But they're instructional <laughs> videos and stuff. But anyway, I've found YouTube to be both for me personally, a fun outlet, a creative outlet, a great way to tell stories, share my finds, yada, yada, yada. But boy, I sure learned a lot from watching other people's videos as well. Right. There was a lot of good information in those videos. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, it's it's funny if you really take a step back and think about it, There, there's almost like certain genres or archetypes of videos. There's some folks who, you know, they their videos are about the adventure, the find, you know, those kinds of things. There are others right. that are more... Self-documentation. You know, like Self-documentation or, or how to... Um, you know, for those that have watched some of my videos, I actually really enjoy, I try to do this in every video, I'm sure I, I don't in every single one, but you know, if I find something that is unique, I, I try to tell a little bit of a story about it to educate, you know, the viewers. That's and one I, of the big I, things I like about your videos. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate it. There's a, there's a few people that do that in different ways. You know, and, but, you know, if, but if you think of like the videos you watch and that you like, you probably could kind of categorize them and put them in, you know what I mean? Some different, different areas, but, um, yeah, but it's been fun. And, um, I'll, I'll tell you one reason why I do not have a, a, a YouTube channel or one of the things that's not one of my reasons. Uh, you know, a lot of people think that, those of us that have these YouTube channels, right, that we are just doing it to make a boatload. Of right. Money. We're going to be rich and famous and live in a Absolutely. mansion and drive fast cars. And... Oh, my goodness. And maybe, maybe for the folks like way up there, you know, people that have quite a few subscribers, quite a few views, you know, you, you can you can perhaps make a little bit of coin. But, that you know, it, it really is more difficult than people think Um the little bit of money that I've made from my channel, you know, from advertising, I do a little bit of merchandise selling. I have chosen, I donate all that back. Um, in 2021, um, every, every uh, earning that I had profit from the, the channel um, was donated to the Wounded Warriors Project. Which it's, it's myself, back. I thought that was very, very cool. Uh very cool of you to to do that in 2021. I do a lot of. Uh, I don't know if, if you've ever heard of a organization before called Operation Gratitude. I have not. They make care packages for our veterans, deployed troops, family members, things like that, uh, first responders, all of that stuff. And in every care package that goes out whether this is domestic, overseas, whatever, every one of those care packages contains a paracord bracelet that was mm -hmm. made by someone and donated to Operation Gratitude. And I normally try to donate to them a couple of times a year. I'll send out a big box of paracord bracelets to them. Uh, that's wonderful. I mean, I... You know, one, tell, tell me if you feel this way, but one of the things I love about our community, I think we are a, we're a group of generous people. And, and I'll tell you, you know who actually gave me the idea? He does not know this, but who gave me the idea of the Wounded Warrior thing? Um, you know, for those of you, you might know Chuck Smalley. Um, he, he, he's I've been heard of the guy. I heard that name. Um, <laughs> you know, I was, I was on a, he's in the chat, groups. actually. Is he, is he? Hey, Chuck. Hey, Chuck. But, uh, Chuck, Chuck posted something. I think it might have been for his son's birthday or his, but you know, you know, Chuck's a great guy, and he's like, "Hey, if, if you really want to wish me happy birthday, <laughs> think about donating to this." You know, he put up a page, and I thought, "What a great idea! What a great way to give back!" And people do this in different ways, but it was just a way to kind of say thank you. Uh -huh. um, I, I happen to be a veteran as well, and this year, I'm not sure if I'm going to I'm going to continue to donate any you know proceeds from the channel. But I'm, I'm looking at another charity, more of a local one called um, Hugs for Heroes. 
Nice. And it's a uh, tri-state veterans organization. They do a variety of things, but based, one of the key things is they help to pay the um, heating bills or to supplement the heating bills of some of the veterans who, you know, might be having some difficulty. So we'll see. I think that's very cool. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Definitely. <clears throat> and if you've listened to uh, many of the archives or, or even seen Chuck's posts or my posts, you know that Chuck and I both are very, very big supporters of our veterans and much respect. Thank you for your service. Yeah, my pleasure. And, you know, it doesn't surprise me there are many veterans in the hobby that do this. There's some who are doing it to help address, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder as well. One of, one of Absolutely. my good, one friend I detect with um, Bruce Rakowski, who may be listening tonight, don't know. I, I refer to him as the Bruce, the Bruce on some of my videos. But uh, he has a friend who... Um, is disabled. And one of the things he and I have talked just a little bit about is that we're actually thinking to see if we, there's a way we can put together a hunt, some type of hunt where some of the local folks here, we can, you know, we can provide our machines and stuff for those who might be wheelchair bound and stuff. So, you know, listen, there's a whole variety of things, but I think as a group, you know, I'm proud of the fact that a lot of us are, you know, we're all about giving back, sharing the joy, the hobby, the fun stuff. And that includes my friend Don from, can you dig it right yeah and i see Shelly's in the chat as well Shelly, yes it's a, one of the most enjoyable live streams out there there's a few i really enjoy i you know i try to make as many as i can but if you guys have not had an opportunity i mean be prepared to laugh have some fun um <laughs> what i really like about that particular live stream is they not only invite participants to show their best finds but they have like this you know let's 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 talk about our craptastic finds <laughs> you know and you you can win some prizes and stuff you know for the the exciting stuff look at my civil war relic or look at this crappy soda can i found you know a bunch of stuff but they're they're really good people yeah yeah absolutely they are and recently they uh they had some one of their prize extravaganzas and gave away a very nice coin donated by you. And somehow or another, they managed to get one in there that I had donated too. Although not not near as nice as yours, but still pretty cool. Well, thank you. No, they're they got some, there's some nice giveaways. I you know I've I've been on the receiving end of a few you know giveaways as well. One from that group and others. But yeah, no, I I appreciate bringing that. We we um. Don and Shelley donated a, a one-tenth ounce American Eagle gold coin to a lucky winner who um, that was part of their year-end giveaway. I've seen yours. I think they were just given a bunch of really nice silver coins. Um, and again, that's, you know, that's not the reason I would join. That's, a, that's like icing on the cake. There's just a lot of fun. Um, I, I will take a moment to say that I'm, stay, you know, if you haven't had a chance to check out my YouTube channel, um, just take a peek at it. Uh, I will later this month um, be announcing a similar giveaway. Same thing, one tenth ounce American Eagle gold coin. We we just flipped four thousand subscribers. Yes, or, congratulations on the milestone. No, thank you. We're coming up on three hundred thousand views, and um, just as a thank you, as a giveaway, we'll be. It'll be real simple. You know, it's going to be one of these things between pick a number between one and four thousand, and uh, whoever gets there first or closest, this is history digger already has the number. I don't know what it is. They will be the lucky winner of uh, a uh, one tenth ounce American Eagle gold gold coin. These beautiful coins, if you haven't seen them. Right, they are. Yeah. They they are very nice coins. Definitely. And, and, I'm, and I'm gulping as I say this. We're going to do that. It's going to be a global thing. So anybody in the world can win that. So who the heck knows when they receive it, when they will receive it. Receive, but <laughs> right. By God, we'll ship it anywhere in the world. We'll, we'll do what we can. Hell or high water. Yeah, exactly. But uh, no, anyway, it's good to get back. But um, it's been fun. And um, 
I have, um, in some ways, it's giving back a little bit to those who helped get me up to speed, you know, as I entered the hobby, Josh. <laughs> Nice. Well, speaking of the hobby, <clears throat> what inspired you to get into metal detecting? Because I'm sure you were there before you you didn't say, hey, I'm going to start a YouTube channel and, oh, you know, I should really get into detecting and focus my channel around this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so really good question. Um one I've been asked to answer, by the way, um, you know, Chris Altman has a, a new book coming out and he's profiling some detectorists. And that's actually a similar question. So I've, I've had the benefit of thinking about this a little bit. If you're not familiar with it from the ground up, you know, the other books he's, he's got out there, really cool stuff. But uh, um, I'll tell you the short answer to that. You know, when I was a, a, a younger child, my, my grandmother owned an antique store. This was called the Richland Thrift Shop. I was like, five years old, six years old. And, you know, I remember going there visiting and, and, you know, walking it basically through this museum, you know, of yesterday, right. stereoscopes, old coins and stuff. And, oh my gosh, it was so exciting. She also had the habit of like for our birthdays, giving us all silver coins and so on. And nice. at the same time, I grew up in like the 60s, 70s, right? This is like the Star Trek era. Sci-fi was really popular. There were shows like Time Tunnel. I don't know if any of you remember James West and the Time Tunnel stuff. Mm -hmm. But but these featured like time travel, you know. And as I grew up, and you know, I also read books from like the Hardy Boys and Treasure Hunting. Not surprisingly, all these things kind of converged. My love for history. I love to kind of you know. I, I wish I could hop in a time machine and travel back and and so on. Um, it was always there. It was always a passion. And fast forward, you know, um, life's busy. You're raising your kids. The job's consuming you. You know, as things start to slow down and stuff, um, I had a good friend of mine who would, was a, a detectorist. She happens to be, uh, I think, 84 years old. And you can see her in one of my videos. Roberta is her name. And, she, and still detects? Been, good for her. I'm, and I'm going to tell you. She holds up with the best of them. It's unbelievable. Good you for talk her. about this and tell me about this and and you know and I would maybe repeat some of the stories of my son-in-law. You know, Nick um, heard about this and kind of corralled the rest of the kids. And you know, probably about uh, four years, three and a half, four years ago, they they decided to pitch in and buy me a metal detector for my birthday. And it was this really high tech pun pun. Bounty hunter. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, I mean, no, you know, it was, it was great. And, you know, they actually, um, they shared this with me. They, they, uh, buried the manual somewhere in the yard and they actually made me find all the different, you know, uh, steps to ultimately find the treasure, which was the manual. But I was hooked. That's unique. I was hooked. So that's how kind of, you know, it's this passion that developed at an early age. And my kids, my kids actually kind of prompted me. And, and from there, now this is where probably for many of you, my story is similar to all of yours. You know, once you find that first coin, and mine happened to be a penny, a Lincoln Memorial, of course, with my daughter Abby's birth date, which I thought was cool. Um, you're, you're like dreaming about this. And when can I get out again and again? And, and that's, you know, that was the start of it, Josh. I've been addicted ever since. It doesn't take much, does it? Oh my gosh, I, I have some buddies I detect with here locally, and my 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 friend Jay like will tell me he's like, man, I'm dreaming about this. I can't, you know, and I I I hope my wife's not listening to this, but you know, we'll be driving and she'll be talking about stuff, and I do my best to, you know, make it look like I'm paying attention. But you know, truth be told, I'm scanning. Right. Right. Well, what about that property over there? But but I, I just find it's just this wonderful blend of, you know, it gets us outdoors. We learn about yes. history. We get an opportunity to capture and share some of the stories, maybe even with our grandkids, our friends and stuff. There's so yep. many things I just love and enjoy. The about experiences, the, the adventure, the chance for that particular item, their, its story continues. Oh, 
my, you know, in, in the camaraderie, the friends I have met, it's just been unbelievable. I have friends for life I've met, but I, I do love the history piece. You know, Bruce and I, my friend Bruce and I share this. I mean, we were detecting um, on a, it was a point of, a, I'll call it an island, you know, where uh, the Fox River here in Wisconsin meets quite an old property, happened to be where I found my first large scent. But, um, you know, he, he found, I believe it was an old uh, cigarette case or something that had some inscriptions on it. You know, he's sitting there on his phone researching this before he even left the property. You know, I love finding things, but I love finding things that can tell a story, you know, that that kind of um, will allow us to in some small, small way. I know this sounds kind of hokey, but time travel back a little bit and get to know a little bit about the culture of those people that were there before us. Those exactly. are my best finds. I just love those kinds of things. Because when you, when you hit that unique old item or or even just a a very old coin uh you know you you have to stop and think for a second you're the first person to touch that and bring that item to light since the last person lost it how many years ago so you you really are kind of using detecting has a bit of a time travel device you're able to step back through that porthole It's amazing. It, and I think, you know, to to bring the past to the present is cool. And then to take a little bit of the present, you know, the stories, the, the adventure and stuff, and preserve it for the future, which is, by the way, why I love the YouTube thing. You know, and again, this is where, you know, some people are like, eh, not for me, totally understand that. But to be able to share these things, I, I'll, I'll tell you something kind of this year I did. Now, like, like a lot of us, you know, you're, you're in the hobby for a couple of years. You, you get to this point where, what the heck do I do with all this rusty junk? And <laughs> I, I know you've talked about this, but you know, there's all kind of really cool creative ways to display your finds, but it can be totally <clears throat> You know, I've, I'm, I'm like, I'm no different than anybody else. I'm like, what do I, you know, you know, I do with this. My, my kids are kind of getting sick of me, you know, stacking stuff on the shelf and showing them. But you know, one of the things I did, and I, I actually made a video about this not too long ago. I, I created a, uh, fine book you know if you guys are not familiar with these companies snapfish shutterfly yeah you can you can produce you load photos oh yeah this software yeah and and i thought okay here's a way to basically it's a coffee table book you know to package some of these things but also put in a few words about the story and and guess what i don't have to be there to also oh this this item let me tell you the story about but, you know, I think that's a that's a fun thing, too, to think about, like, you know, as you get into the hobby, because you, you'll everybody develops stories about their cool finds. And you want to share these things. How are you going to do that beyond right. just the physical displaying of these things? That's a fun one. If you guys haven't seen that, give that one give that one a watch, because I, I think for me to, you know, I have like a little coupon. You see you know, these companies have coupons to actually make the book. It was like thirty eight bucks. That's and, not um, bad. Just something different. Something different and fun and fun. Yeah, that's not bad at all. What do you how do you display your finds, Josh? Uh well <clears throat> right now, with them all with the all the work that we've had going on in the house, a lot of them are buried in boxes mm. and totes and things like that. Some of them are still hanging on the walls. Uh, but there are a lot that are buried in boxes and books and in storage and things like that and in totes. And it once we get all this work done, it'll be a regular treasure hunt right here for me at home. As a matter of fact, I'm still searching around for a bag of silver mercuries that got away from me somewhere in the house. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, I understand. That's one of my favorite coins. I, I absolutely love finding those. Do you have anything? Do you have a favorite find? Hmm. Favorite type of item? I like tokens. I mean, the the old coins are cool. Don't get me wrong. I love finding old silver and old coins, but I really love finding old tokens. Well, we found just... a couple. 
of those. They, they tell a story, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's, they're so unique and diverse. I was at a really nice outdoor antique show in, in this area. I mean, several, several acres of this beautiful Catholic basilica anywhere near here. Anyway, I st- happened to stop by this uh, booth. This guy had, he's a coin collector. Okay. And I'm rummaging through his stuff. And I came upon this box. And I have to confess, I was not familiar with these. But it was a box of what are called love tokens. Okay. Oh, nice. Are, yeah. You, you're familiar with these love tokens? Yes. I was not. And, you know, for those listening might not be familiar with these, you know, around the turn of the century, World War One, you know, um, a lot of the, the coinage, a lot of the, the currency was silver, and it was common for people to deface one side of the silver and have something engraved, you know, on that second side. Yeah, and, and it, it goes it, back it, much farther than that even. Oh, I've seen it on seated dimes and things like that. It really does. It, in, in, in the U.K., it's like really old, but it, it got like more popular, you know, during this period. Yes. And um, one of the things I learned was it was actually something that if, if you, you know, if you, if you were courting a young lady, you presented her with a love token, the back half of which, let's say, had her initials on there. You know, should she marry you? Like, what would be her married name? Whatever. If you presented this and she accepted was actually kind of like an engagement agreement. It was, it was almost like the, the uh, you know, because engagement wing, rings were not necessarily a thing then. So some of these love tokens served the purpose of um, like a, a, an agreement, a little type of thing. But I purchased a couple and I have some, but I've never found one. I have seen some of, you know, our friends find those, but I would absolutely love to find a love token. Oh, yeah, they've got such a just beautiful script on a lot of them. Yeah, these are like really nice detail, and these would be people at fairs and stuff. But, yeah, there's um, there have been a few that I've just acquired just because I, I think they're so darn interesting. But not, but I know what you mean about the other tokens, even like a drugstore token or, you know, um, a grocery store token. I think that we were – some of us were up in – North uh, West Wisconsin this summer. Believe it or not, I I was able to secure permission to metal to tap the Laura Ingalls Wilder home site. Nice. If, uh, if people aren't familiar with Laura Ingalls Wilder, wrote the Little House on the Prairie, you know, series of books, and this location is where the story called uh, Big House in the Little Woods took place. And um, we were fortunate enough, I contacted the, you know, the, the property is actually owned by a, a local museum now. And, you know, made a pitch. And, of course, they agreed to this. And, and uh, I offered, we offered to, you know, donate some fines to the local museum. But anyway, one of the cool things, we, we found several things tied to the Laura Ingalls Wilder period. Bullet from Paw, some suspenders. Some of the coins they talked about, you know, from that era. But but one of the things we found from a later date, uh, my, my buddy Robert Frank found a token. It was one of these like drugstore, like soap tokens. You know, you could exchange the token. It was almost like a coupon, I guess is what I would call it. But yeah, I, I think those things are pretty fun. Right. <clears throat> and we've actually got Chuck on with us. How is it going, Chuck? Good. Good. How's everybody tonight? Rob, how are you doing? Mr. Smalley, good to hear from you, sir. Doing well. How are you? Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. Living uh, in northern Illinois weather, just like you are in Wisconsin, from one day to the other, minus 10 to 50. (laughs) Goodness. Indeed, indeed. I have thoroughly enjoyed watching your... You put a lot of brief videos up, you know, on... uh, on Facebook and stuff, but man, you were slaying it this fall. Yes, I had a, I had a real good fall. I, I really did. But uh, those love tokens, I found two over all the years, and one's really nice. I have it, and it had been done 
on a barber dime because on the back side of it, it's an eighteen ninety nine. And it has Chuck, a slip J R on it. The other one I found you. had been plow hit. Oh, that's too and bad. It was in rough shape, so I really can't tell what it is. But I had a gentleman out in Iowa. And most of those love tokens have been found in around, as you were talking, old fairgrounds. Those guys traveled with mm-hmm. the fairs, yeah, mm-hmm. and would script them out for people. Kind of like the old hobo nickels. Yep, and uh, he found a quarter, 1877. Ooh. Beautiful seated. You flip it over on the back, it's some of the prettiest engraving I have ever seen. That uh, that guy may have even been a jeweler. And uh, Dave called me up, and he said, he sent me pictures of it. He said, who would do that? He wasn't familiar with the love token thing. I said, dude, that's worth more than the quarter would have been to you. you right. I said, a whole collector base on those. Especially with said, it being a quarter size. Yeah. I said, they're gorgeous. I said, and he called me back. He did some research. He said, you know what? You're right. I said, they don't come up that often. That is a great find. Well, and you know what, Chuck? They're one of a kind. Yep, yeah, they're one of the literally. One of, I, 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 am, I am curious. I always I, hope to find another one. I, I'm with you, man. I want to ask you: Was the barber one that you found was it hold or not? No hole. And neither was that quarter hmm. that nice. they found. They found <laughs> found that. So, but his had evidence of having appeared on it. I've seen that where they... Yeah, I've seen that a, done. A pin, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Um, yeah, there's a few a few guys, you'll see them pop up occasionally, you know, people will post those and stuff, but but I think yep. the fact they're unique, and Josh, you mentioned the Hobo Nichols, that's a whole other category of stuff, but talk about artwork, oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, that's something I've never found. I've seen them, I've seen them for sale, but I've never found them. Right. Yeah. And no. and some of the modern day reproductions are pretty cool, but I like the older ones myself. Yeah. Anyway, your your YouTube channel is doing very well. I uh, when I get a chance to watch some all everybody's, I I sit down. And if Rob's got a new one, I'll watch his. Well, nice. I appreciate I that, time. Chuck. I mean. You, you you know if if for those of you that don't like my channel or whatever blame blame it on Chuck because he got me started I was uh, <laughs> I was I uh, I you know we've been blamed for I, worse well maybe maybe but uh, I had a couple great conversations with him and you know at the time when the Nocta Simplex was all the rage and you couldn't find one you could not find. Guess who I was able to find? Who got me one in short or You know, Mr. Smalley got me one. So uh, appreciate that. Machine. Oh my goodness! It. Um, I absolutely. I mean, I. I think with all the hoopla, with regard to the legend and the Deus too. Yeah. I mean, what what they did, you know, for the price, you know, that they've offered. Not not to mention, you know. Um. One thing I've always enjoyed about them is, I mean, they have a presence. Delec is all over the place. You know, they stand yeah. behind what they do. Yeah. But the the value for the money, um, you know, I really enjoyed my simplex. Okay, and I'm eager eager to see what's going to happen with the legend. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. It will be. You know, I mean, just the the, the you know and I. I'm not really into the bashing one detector versus the other, that kind of stuff. But listen, the build quality of the Simplex was incredible, and they seem to be carrying that forward. They, they brought some of the best of the Amphibio and the Simplex into this Nocta Legend, you know. And uh, I am kind of curious. I've been watching the testers and stuff, and I'll be eager to see what their – not their beta does, um, but their, their new, new release does. But even, even if it's – listen, even if it's on parity – with the mind lab with the equinox right 
the build quality. Um, I mean, come on, build quality is pretty cool. Not to mention all the other stuff, the light vibrating handle, all the other telescopic stuff. You know, I had to pay all kind of extra money to to you know replace some things. I you know I bought a secondary shaft and a bunch of other stuff. So anyway, I'm a big fan of theirs. I'm eager to see what people think. Right, good be so, interesting. It will. And I I've recently been talking with uh, Andy on them. And he's been working with them both, so we'll see how he comes up with his finals there. And if anybody's going to tear in the machine, he will. It's him. Well, he has that engineer background, that mindset, and um, you know, yep. you, Chuck's talking about Andy Savage, and he has yes. incredible books out there. I've uh, I've made a couple of videos about the the, the, the his books actually, and. Um, yeah, this guy gets up to speed faster than anybody I've seen on the new stuff. His books are phenomenal. Um, I'm I'm hoping there's a Deus two when I I've, I've ordered the Deus two on. Oh, I'm wait. sure there will be. I can't wait. Right. Well, it should be within the next two weeks. Some of the major shipments are coming out. Yeah, was... Josh and I were talking about that a little earlier. It's like, you know, on you know, I think everybody's well intentioned, but you know, a couple people maybe here's what we are thinking, expecting, but you know, it hasn't happened. This is this is with regard to both Nokta and Deus. A lot of this is supply chain stuff. Um I'm I'm actually a little concerned because I'm heading down to Dig Stock, North Carolina. There's a dig in Florida I'm going to and I just hope I get this thing before before I leave, I have no problems taking my Equinox down there, but I really want to try the new stuff. Are you going down to Florida Hurt 8? Um, you know, maybe. I'm going to a, 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 an event, the uh, Sand Hill Metal Detecting Club in Jefferson, South Carolina. I'm actually um, heading to that. And um, long story, but I'm... I've been talking to, you know, I've seen Greg's posts and stuff, but I, I may try to make it down there. Um, I'll tell you what, here's, here's the thing. So the wife and I have decided to pull the trigger. We're buying a class B van. I don't know if you, you all are familiar. It's a little mini RV, like, like into ah. these, when, you know, when Amazon comes up and stuff, it's, it's like that size. And we're waiting to hear from the dealer when this thing in February is going to be ready. And it's in Florida. We have to go to Florida to pick this thing up. And uh, I'm very excited about this for many, many reasons, the least of which um, I will be, be traveling more. I'm retiring this next year. And, you know, the history digger is going to be on the road a little bit more. But uh, I'm, I'm hesitant to pull the trigger on the Florida 8 hunt simply because I'm waiting to get confirmation on when I pick this darn van up. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Yes, it does. But so, um, excited about that. And uh, I was sharing with Josh. Chuck, I, I want to ask you a question if you've ever done this. But I, I told Josh, this is before we jumped on, we went live. I said, yeah, one of the things I'm looking at maybe in, uh, in, in 2022 is I may actually do one of these trips over to the U.K. Yep. You know, they've got these. Have you ever done that? Yes. Enjoyed it. I've been over there twice. Is that right? Yes. I go over with uh, Ron Guadazzo, Chicago Ron Barber. Oh, Chicago Ron. Chicago yep. Ron, yeah. And I are, go way back. We're good friends. And uh, I've had, actually had a blast in the past two years now. We canceled with COVID. Mm -hmm. I was going to go again. So I talked that whole group, a bunch of them, to go to Alaska with me. Oh, I saw your stuff up there. That was a trip. And uh, we're going back to summer. <clears throat> well, that'll be fun. That's nice. Uh, Alaska is there's, 20, there's 20 of us going. So it's going to be interesting. And I don't know if we'll ever replicate a 7.1 Troy <laughs> ounce nugget. <laughs> I was yeah, it'll be you, fun to try. Yeah, yeah, if you can find the big brother or little sister to that, that was a hell of a find, my friend. Well, that uh, that area is known for large nuggets, very well known for large ones, much bigger than that. 
Uh, there was a 34-ouncer taken out of there way back, and a lot of at 20 ounces. It was well known for it. So you never know. Right. Well, that you know, the I tell you what set me on to this. You know, I met a gentleman uh, by the name of Tim Blank. He goes by Old Digger. You know, on, uh-huh. the, on the social media site, great guy. Just a great guy. I met him at uh, North yeah. Carolina Dig Stock. Last I believe year. he's in the chat too, possibly. Hey, hey, Tim. So, Tim, you, you know, my <clears throat> wife needs to talk to you. She she wants to talk to you because she's blaming you. But um, I was listening <laughs> to him on it was Relic Radio, I think, last week. And oh my gosh, I was on the edge of my seat. Tim was uh, talking about his couple trips he's made over, you know, to the UK and. Tim, you got to correct me if I'm wrong here in the chat, but I think he, he's gone over twice and brought back four gold items, or isn't you know going through the, the, the process of getting those back. But yep. hearing him talk about the adventure, so I was like, oh my gosh, I need to do this. So I reached out and I'm, I'm trying to see if I can put something together. But man, I'm hoping this this happens. I hear you check on the COVID thing. That's the one the one kicker. But Tim. My wife's blaming you, my friend. Well, uh, you can check in with Ron. There's others that host them. Uh, and, they, and Charlene hosts trips over there. Savage. Yeah. Oh, I did not know that. Okay. Yes, yeah. they do. And uh, But they go north central a little more. And mm-hmm. my second trip, I found an 1806 3-Diddy gold piece. So... I found Roman coins to 100 B.C. Uh, and he saw a piece of a torque that was found yep. on the surface. On the surface, about eight inches of a Roman torque. Or Celtic, wow. excuse me, Celtic torque. Yeah. If you ever see a picture pop up on my page <laughs> of... Uh, Adult beverage with this gold stick sticking out of it. When they handed it to me, I sat there and stirred my drinks with it. <laughs> I stayed well, in the tell you, smiling the whole time. Between that and, and Tim, Tim basically found a half of a, a gold deviled egg. He found this ingot over there. I was like, I, I couldn't believe it. But yeah, you know, the whole, I, I hate to say this, but I mean, I'm, I'm tickled to death if I find something, you know, turn of the century. Yeah, the whole idea of old in the UK. They, they, these guys just have it so incredibly good over there. They know it too. Oh yeah, they um, know it. Oh yeah, yeah. But I've got I, some I good friends there's... over there in the business. They're selling detectors. The owner, Joan Allen's, and oh, yeah. a few others that I made while yeah. I was there. The first trip I went to detect the ball, and then was staying in a castle. It was built in 1490 and got permission from them to hook the site. It was a hotel built alongside this castle, which the castle was part of it. Well, my wife is a big, huge Downton Abbey fan, and they used mm-hmm. that castle in Downton Abbey on some things. Mm-hmm. So she was in heaven with that, and they said, go ahead. After all the people, we had a uh, conference there, my lab conference. Once they left, they let me have free reign of 700 acres. Oh, my goodness. That's and a I big question. Popping, right that was now. the first time I free reigns detected over there. And yeah. I was popping up stuff in new, the 1400s daily. Oh, my goodness. Wow. I've been watching this guy, uh, the Dukes of Derbyshire. Derbyshire. Um, he's one of the early testers of the day of two. Man, great videos. Great videos. There was, there was, there was a gentleman, he's, he stopped making videos, sadly. I'm not quite sure why, but he had a channel, went by the name of Square Nail Squirrel. And um, I, remember I think that. he was like a, you know, the guy, um, he drawn a blank on his name, but he, I think he's a surveyor and stuff. But, oh, my God, his cinematography, okay, it's incredible. Like right up there with, uh, you know, Brad Green, Green Mountain. Green Mountain um, detecting. Exactly. But this guy, the Duke of, Dukes of Derbyshire, if you get a chance, take a look at his stuff. It's beautiful. But um, I have to tell you, though, there's a little bit of a debate in the, in the Rizzo household because the question is, you know, if I do this thing, should Mrs. History Digger go over with me or not? Because, you know, you're detecting like all day. 
and as much as she supports me and stuff, she that's not for her. So the question is, what what could she do? And I'm curious if Tim took his wife over. But it sounds like you, Chuck, you had your uh, your wife join you there on that hunt, huh? I, I'm sorry? You had your spouse join you when you went over there. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, she had a blast. We'd go running around the different little villages where all this down Abbey was shot. Some of the locations in the morning while it was raining, swing back. We'd be back at the hotel one, two o'clock, and then till dark, I'd be tacked. Love and it. Love it. Jill enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed having her along. I was showing her everything. I turned everything over to the hotel manager, and they put it in a display case behind the counter as you go in. It's up in uh, uh, Oxfordshire. Because I didn't find anything that was treasure. Well, that that part of it's no different than here, right? You you know, we go out with expectations of, hey, oh, it, a, a nice find icing on the cake as far as I'm concerned. As much as I was excited about, you know, what Tim did, I... I have no expectation to go over there and bring back gold, although that would be wonderful. A ham- right. A, you know, a hammered would be wonderful. A brooch would be wonderful. But, you know, even if it's, um, oh, goodness, just a few old coins, I, I would take any. The experience is worth it. Let me put it that way. But, yeah, that's hopefully on the horizon. But I'm excited about your Alaska return, Chuck. Oh, it's always fun up there. This will be my 20th trip up there. All, all through the state. I have a brother-in-law mm-hmm. that lives in Fairbanks, and I use that as the home base. And he is the manager of a huge flying service, so I use all that to my advantage. And met a lot of people with mines. And back in the day, when gold was so soft and low, rather than fly me out, they shut down a lot of what they call the cat mines, the dozers, the placers. They shut them down because it costs more to recover an ounce of gold than an ounce of gold. Right. So I was on sites that most guys would never get a hunt. I've been up there salmon fishing. A buddy of mine lives up in Anchorage. He's a pilot. And, oh, cool. You know, it was, a, it was a different experience because, you know, you, you know, you, you go anywhere here in the States and you fish. I mean, it's all about fishing up there. You, you, you need to be really mindful of your surroundings given the bear grizzly yeah. stuff like that did, did, did you run into any of that up there oh yeah i've had a couple interesting occurrences that one with a big bull musk ox and two with bears and one with a oh. one with a big seal my uh my buddy when he first went up there he tells this story i'm going to keep this clean here josh i know this is a <laughs> show, but uh he was getting ready to go out fishing for the first time, and you know one of these old salty guys has been up there said, "Well, now listen, you, you, but you need to take some protection with you. You need to take a you know a weapon because of the bear." And my friend had a a little twenty two Ruger, <laughs> and and he and he asked this you know across the old timer. He said, "Hey, well, you know, will this suffice as protection?" And the guy you know chewed up his tobacco wad, spit, and he said, "Yeah, you know, you can take that with you there, but before you go, you might." you might want to file off that bite on the end of the barrel. And my, my friend was, you know, he's eating this up. He's like, okay, he's taking the, why do I, why do I need to do that? He said, because when you try to shoot that bear with that little clinker and the bear comes, charges you and grabs it out of your hand and shoves it up, you don't right. want that, uh, you don't want that nub. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Well, anyway, Rob, you have a great one. Keep doing the great videos. Give me a call if you need anything. And uh, we aren't that far apart. And I hope that you get that trailer soon. You make all those travels you want. Get overseas. Go to England. It's it's worth every bit of your stay there, rain or shine. And uh, it's a lot of fun. But I'll back out of here let you guys keep going. Have a great night. Thanks you sure. too. Thanks Good for the call, Chuck. Chuck. Hope you Talk get to feeling you. better. Okay. Good to see you evolve all the way up and all the fights you're doing, the people, and you, you you have a good show. So take care, my friend. Thank you. Now, what's 
what's this I hear that you like to feed the guys you hunt with? <laughs> okay, you must be talking to my friend Dylan. You must be talking to <laughs> These guys, um, I, I, I truly sincerely mean this. I, I think one of the best things I've found, I've made some great friends. You know, D- Dylan, oh, absolutely. Dylan Wallendale, he manages the Relic Hunter group on Facebook. He last year invited me on this permission. Um, I didn't know Dylan and he watched some of my videos. We live close by and we've, we've become good, good friends. And, and that group has expanded, but you know, often, uh, when we get together and detect as a group, you know, uh, whoever organizes the permission will, will often bring, bring food. So I, I I've kind of gotten to the habit of uh, supplying these guys with, with some food. And one of our last last hunts this year we had a, a little bit of fun we called it the battle at the scout camp this is a video you'll see on my page where it's almost like a like a if you've watched the show the office right you know I, we interview everybody well, what's your secret what are you going to do today and so forth well my secret was to load all these guys up on sugar and i and i bought, bought a bunch of big donuts so that very shortly into the, the hunt they would kind of hopefully crash they would crash and leave the good finds to me. My, my plan didn't quite work out that way, Josh. Um, I think uh, <laughs> most of them found better stuff that day than me, but that's Dylan. That's Dylan putting that in there, I think. <laughs> nice. And how did you meet Rob and Dylan? There was, a, there was an old abandoned um, mansion up in um, central Wisconsin. That had really bizarre history. This wealthy family... Uh, built this thing. Th- then there were some health issues. They sold this mansion to this this uh, branch of the Catholic Church. It became almost like a monastery. It was overtaken later uh, during an Indian uprising. Marlon Brando actually visited this during the uprising. At any rate, Dylan secured permission to metal detect this thing. And you know, this is this is the trip he invited me and Robert Frank along. And this thing's been hit many times. It's fascinating. If you, if you get a chance to watch the video there, please do. I tell the story about the Indian uprising, the, the gentleman that built it and stuff. But uh, we found some really cool stuff on a property that's been turned over. There was a fire and stuff. But, you know, that's where we met. And, again, back to, like, hey, why do we all do this? What are, what are some of the things? One of the things I, I said coming into this last year is, listen, if you're fortunate enough, to get a permission, okay? Be generous. Invite a friend. Number one, it'll come back to you. Most of these people return the favor. But it's so Usually, rewarding yeah. to do this. Oh, my gosh, you're doing it together. and it's fun. That has been, I mean, to me, um, one of the best things. But that's how Dylan and I have met. And we, we then later, we did... We did the big stock down in North Carolina together. We've done. We've been on. Oh my gosh, so many hunts. I can't even, you know, number them all. But um, and, I've, and and again, that group has expanded. There's been several of us. But probably the same for you, Josh. You meet some great people along the way. Eh? Oh yeah, absolutely. Are you responsible for inspiring anyone to get certain detectors? Oh, I may resemble that remark. I think I may be, <laughs> you know, I have been accused of, you know, I, I mean, you know, it, 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 it I, I actually created a meme the other day. I said, you know, the, the CDC is studying metal detecting. Is it a disease or is it I a, saw uh, that. I had to share that. that you know, I mean, I, 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 I started out with a couple of different detectors and I'm just kind of curious. I, I, I do think I've settled into the X platform and so forth but as i've kind of you know evolved and these all have their different places you know there's certain times i value one over the other i've shared that and i just you know why am i upgrading from the simplex to the equinox you know why did i what what is it about the orx that i'm i'm, I'm kind of e- eager to experience and stuff i think like many people you know what we're all trying to do is find our goldilocks device what's the right thing for us or for that type of right I, yep. I probably am guilty of um of a few uh, detector purchases uh, in the last couple of years yes <laughs> 
Well, you know, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with no, that at you, all. No, I mean, you know, we all have our vices. Um, this is one of them. I mean, I've, um, I, unlike some of my fellow detectors, I've not, like, I don't have 20 detectors hanging on my, my wall. I have given them away or sold a few of them, you know. So probably in 2022, you'll see me swinging the Deus 2 and the Knox. Those will be my, you know, they'll, they'll be my two go-to. For no, 2022. Years ago, I was I was hunting a permission, and let's see. Back at that time, I I want to say I was running probably an E track, mm. and I mm-hmm. had a guy come up. He had been watching me for a while, and he come up and he wanted to know if I had been finding anything. And well, yeah, I've been finding a little bit and. We talked for a few minutes, and then he asks me, so how much does one of those things cost? And I told him, you know, what the sticker price was on an E-Track. And Mm -hmm. automatically, you could see the sticker shock is hitting. And he's kind of giving you this dumbfounded look like you're spending thousands to find cents. You know, you have no cents. And I asked him, I said, well, let me ask you this. And he says, okay. I said, do you like to hunt? You like to fish? Mm -hmm. He says, yeah, I do both. I said, you only got one shotgun? Well, no. He said, what do you like to fish for? Bass? I said, you got a boat? Well, yeah. How much your bass boat cost? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> then he changed his tune real quick. Said, well, see, well, you know, if it's that, something in, you in enjoy. <laughs> well, it's all relative. And in this and almost all of those things, including detectors, you know, they, they depreciate. But I'm not sure if any of those other things, right, provide you at least an opportunity to earn some of that back. I mean, there are people, especially the beach hunters, who, right. boy, they, they could pay for it. You know, and I, I've found some gold rings for sure. I, I tend to kind of keep those things or give them away. I haven't, I, I really have not sold one thing I think I've ever found. But what other hobby at least gives you the potential to earn some of it back, pay for itself? I mean, there's not that many. No. No, not like, not like detecting can anyway. Yeah. 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 But, uh, at E Track, I think my brother in law had one of those and uh, detected side by side with that. It's still a pretty darn good machine. Oh yeah, that that thing was definitely a silver sniffer. You you'd step onto a property with an E Track and silver coins and just jump out of the ground. I surrender. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm really eager. I, I, I you know, circling back to the Deus too. You know, there's so many interesting things about this. If you guys are not familiar with this this new yeah. machine that XP is launching, but some of the the videos that are coming out now, these are not the testers who I'm sure we're sincere and trying to be legit, but, you know, um, these are these are just regular, you know, Sally's and Joe's here detecting these things. And this machine has some promise. I mean, there are people finding some things that otherwise were overlooked, maybe a little exactly. deeper than the discrimination. I, you know, their whole mantra, interestingly, is, you know, explore like never before. We'll see if that holds true. I've got, like, one particular park I... I was fortunate enough to hit this summer. It happened to be the uh, home site of the first property in my local town here. And they, they the, the home was demolished. They sold it to the city, and they, they turned it into a park. Okay. Oh, mm-hmm. my God, did I find some cool stuff there. And I went back and found some cool stuff. Went back, and it didn't work. I've been back, like, several times, and it's like I have really, really picked this place clean. And I'm going to tell you, that's going to be the, one of the first places. I'm With multiple detectors, by the way. Different right. coils, different frequencies. I'm really going to be curious to see if the Deus 2 sniffs out anything that I might have missed on those previous hunts. And those are one of the first areas I love to take a new machine or coil. Don't don't take it out someplace where you haven't been before. Take it to a place you've really covered. And mm-hmm. then you can really mm-hmm. start to see for yourself the potential worth of that machine. Yeah, indeed. 
So we'll see. I, you know, it's always tough. You know, you never know on a given day unless you're very, very methodical or you've gridded something out. Is it right. a day? You know, did I just not put the coil over it? Is it, is it maybe the ground conditions? Is right. all, you, more, you just mo- don't more moisture. You, mm-hmm. you know, who's to say? But yeah. then there's those times where you you run across that certain target where you're going, okay, really? How could I have missed this? It, it's oh, well oh within the depth range of any of my other machines, you know. Josh, this particular series of videos I'm talking about, my buddy Bruce and I go to this place. I'm really excited. I'm like, Bruce, we get to go to this thing, and we can actually use shovels because they're going to be regrading this. So, I mean, there were so many things we were excited about this. Right. And, you know, the first time we went there, we found a couple things. Nothing that was old. And I was kind of like, oh, I'm really sorry. You know, and, and you know, Bruce was a gentleman. Oh, it was a fun time. Well, I went back, you know, a week later. And, you know, same thing. But again, it was, I clearly missed some things. I, I was going too fast. Long story short, the stuff I pulled out of that park, I mean, just incredible. Barber, silver coins, a large scent, some old relics, incredible buttons all of which we missed on the first hunt. Okay. <laughs> What's that tell you? Yep. Tell, tells me I'm not as good as I think I am. Let's put it that way. Well, you know, we could all use a little practice every now and then. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> That's the Indeed, beauty of but, it. Uh, we're out there, you know, well, when the weather's conducive, we're out there daily honing our skills. I, and I think just something like, you know, being adaptable, changing it up, slowing down. And then, of course, there's the yes. whole adjusting your frequency, recovery speed. You know, all of those things are potential, you know, tactics in our arsenal. And, I mean, if I learned anything about that this summer is, you know, sometimes the best the best tactic or the best weapon you have is a little bit of perseverance and a little bit of adaptability. Yeah, as, a, as opposed to, you know, just, oh, nothing here, move on. Patience, right. yes. Patience. Yep. Make, make your site work for you. Make your environment work for you. Adapt to the environment. Adapt to the environment. And, and when you, you start know, that, to hit something, then you really want to slow down. I mean, how many of us, because the last great find was in this node, at this sensitivity level, recovery reactivity, you almost become a little biased as opposed to what's the ground telling me today. Right. You know, how, and I'll tell you what, that's, you know, as I get a little bit more mature in my detecting, it's, you know, you know, adjusting myself to that day, that environment, that ground, you know, there's something to be said about that. Knowing when to, you know, the, the wise old metal detectors, Kenny Rogers, no one to hold them, no one to fold them. You know, no one to, right. this is not the mode for today, that kind of a thing. But anyway, that was one of my big takeaways for me in 21. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've, I've hunted an area that, I don't know, for, for at least last 45 years or so has been absolutely pounded by everybody and their brother with a detector including myself and i can still go in there with the mindset of you know this is where i'm gonna hunt and if i'm diligent i can still find something notable and Mm -hmm. you know sometimes you may have to tweak the machine or change your methodology up a little bit but if you put in the effort you can usually find that you can still be rewarded out of those places that people say, oh, you're not going to find anything there. It's been hunted out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I couldn't couldn't agree more. But so I'm going to try to take some of those lessons into this, you know, this next year. I, one, one thing I'm going to try to do a little differently, I, mean, I, I think all of it, you know, challenge yourself a little bit to say, what am I going to do incremental differently this year? You know, largely... COVID, COVID presented some challenges in securing permissions, you know, with door knocking and distancing. Hopefully, yes. knock on wood, you know, as, as, as this uh, succeeds in other things, you know, vax and therapeutics come into play. 
door knocking can, can be a real thing again. I'm, I'm hoping to do a little bit more of that. I, I have some really interesting ways I secure permissions. And I'm going to continue to do those. I, I do some permission packets and letters and direct mail. I use social media. But I'm actually going to try to augment those with some more door knocking this year. And um, one little thing, if, if any of the listeners, if you guys, you, you remember the, the, well, it's still out there, but American Pickers, you know, mm -hmm. these guys, Mike and um, Frank, right, would knock on the door and have a little flyer. You know, here's what we do. Here's the stuff. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to take some of my permission packet artifacts and, you know, create some flyers, and I'm going to challenge myself and my, some of my buddies here, Dylan, Robert, Jay, <laughs> Michael. Uh, we're going to do some more door knocking this year. Nice. Well, hopefully it is a very successful year for you then. Fingers crossed, yeah. And, and for you as well, Josh. Um, but it has a, been a pleasure talking with you and, and Chuck and, uh, you know, seeing some of the folks uh, in chat, some of the questions here. I've really enjoyed uh, the opportunity. And, and again, I want to thank everybody. But I also want to just take a minute and thank you for what you do to promote the hobby and, you know, produce such an incredible show. There's, uh, I've, I've enjoyed it very much. And um, it has truly been an honor to talk with you tonight. Well, we do try to make it painless. <laughs> At least as painless as possible. Yeah, for those who've never been on, I, I was telling my wife, I said, you know, you know, Josh, of course, talks with you before the show, gives you some I said, it's like, you know, getting onto an airplane, you see this experienced pilot. I, I said, this is so <laughs> easy. I, the only question I had is, when does the complimentary drink get served during the flight? <laughs> right. They're in the green room. <laughs> indeed indeed but no this minus the candy corn frank said it all minus the kid frank frank that's right complimentary candy corn right we, we you know we need that i do like candy corn frank i'm like one of the few people that supports you with that my friend <laughs> nice well i think we've we've had you on here for for a bit we may have to get you back on again to talk about how you go about getting permissions and stuff i'm sure dylan would get a kick out of that but uh before we go i'm just gonna hand the mic to you for for a minute let you plug whatever you may want to any facebook groups uh youtube anything like that well okay again i'll just say thank you and again everybody if um you know, hey, if you want to have some fun, the only plug I would say, and it's really just a thank you, is get in on the competition for the gold coin. I'll have a video posted on my channel within the next two weeks. I'll probably keep the contest up for about two weeks, and it's going to be real simple. But, hey, if you're up for, you know, maybe winning a chance to have a, um, a gold coin, you know, participate in that. Um, very simple. You just need to be a subscriber. That's it. No no other shenanigans. But other than that, uh, the only plug I would give is uh, there are some phenomenal live streams. If you're not familiar, of course, there's Detecting America, Steve and Frank, Shelly and Don, and the Can You Dig It? Digging Canuck has an incredible live stream, wonderful lady, if you're not familiar with her, our um, reti retired um, Mount Mountie Ranger up north there, Canadian Mountie yeah. Ranger there, but she's wonderful too. But and of course, this show. But anyway, that's those are the only plugs I would give. Otherwise, <laughs> I, I wish everybody a happy new year and uh, and uh, really appreciate uh, everybody supporting all of these different channels. Well, thanks for taking the night, the time to be on with us tonight, here, Rob. Hang in there with me for a few minutes, and we'll get out of here. You bet, buddy. All right, so for everyone else, obviously, that was Rob Rizzo, the History Digger on YouTube. Make sure and check out his YouTube channel. The link has been in the chat and in the description. It will also carry over to YouTube as well. Uh, we're back Sunday with Greg Papalo talking about Florida Hunt 8. Make sure and tune in for that. Other than that, I think we're going to roll on out of here. Have a wonderful evening, everyone.